What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have some insane action figure news for you guys today. We have some brand new AEW action figure news for you guys, and it is, it's probably the best day of reveals in the history of AEW, I would say, in the history of Jazzwares being affiliated with AEW and their action figures, and just everything that they've done for us so far, man, they have blown it out of the water today. And we have a lot of things, man. We have a lot of things that are amazing. We have some things that I'm not so happy about. We're going to go through everything. I'm going to break down all of the pictures, all of the photos. I'm going to give you guys all of my thoughts on everything, what I like, what I don't like, and just kind of exclaim all the problems and the amazingness that we got today. So let's go ahead and break it down, man. Starting out first, this is the AEW Revolution Fan Fest reveals. So it is, you know, a big day. They have a lot of people around showing off figures, and we're going to dive into it today, man. Let's go ahead. I have to start it off with this. I feel like this is the first figure everybody wants to see. AEW Unmatched Series Number 4, CM Punk. Now, now, honestly, with you guys, I gotta be real with you from top to bottom. I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything, man. I'm gonna be dead honest with you. These are not perfect figures, okay? These are not perfect figures by any means. I think that both of them do have their issues. Of course, we do have the regular version in the long tights, and then the chase variant is the trunks. I know a lot of people are gonna be upset that the chase variant is the trunks version. However, I still am happy that we're getting a CM Punk. You know, the figure looks pretty solid. It's definitely not perfect, which I'm about to, you know, describe to you and get into all the different things, but it does does have some some good qualities about it and we're going to cover all of those different things as you guys can see from the photos in the long tights version you are getting this really sick ass hoodie like it's a cloth hoodie it's a great cloth accessory we've been waiting on more cloth accessories from aew and jazz wears the long tights i don't i don't know what it is man these these legs though these legs are the big con for me and they almost look like they have a little bit of johnny gargano syndrome i don't know why they have like this weird leg mold and then they have that like cut down there i don't know if this is i guess this is the sammy Guevara legs. I'm pretty sure this is the Sammy Guevara legs, but the way they did the kick pads is just super odd. Like, I get it why they did the, like, skinny kick pad mold and it just looks so skinny here. Like, it doesn't look bad on the on the Sammy Guevara figure that I'm holding in my hand right now. And so maybe it'll be one of those issues where it looks better in person than it does in prototype images here or in these in images that we're getting of the figure right here. But the long tights one looks worse to me, like, in the legs than the non-tights one. I think that the chase variant looks way better. The head sculpts aren't the best. I'll say that the regular version head sculpt looks a little bit better than the chase variant version but they're, they're not perfect likeness whatsoever they don't capture CM Punk to a T but I still am happy that we're getting a CM Punk and it also looks like his wrist tape is going to be molded like a lot of people's wrist tape today does look molded on and sculpted it is no longer like painted on there or at least for a lot of guys it isn't so that'd be pretty cool to add some depth to the figure but it is kind of weird looking but I am happy to have the CM Punk I think it's going to be a great step forward for his future figures to come but for our first CM Punk it's not a bad figure but the legs are definitely weird and using the Sammy Guevara kick pads instead of the Kenny Omega kick pads and lower legs, I think that was a mistake. I think they should have went with the Kenny Omega look instead of the Sammy Guevara look, and I think that's why it looks so awkward and weird, but, you know, I, I digress. Now, after CM Punk, we got some really insane Supreme Collection figures, and not to toot the old horn here, but we called it. We called the Supreme Collection Series number two, and it has been confirmed, man. Kenny Omega is in the Supreme Collection Series number two, and this figure looks incredible. I think this is the best Kenny we've seen so far. Not only does he have his black and white gear, guys, but he also comes with his Demon Slayer attire, which is really beautiful. I've always said this since we got our first Kenny Omega. I think that his gear looks better in figure form than it does in real life. The colors are very vibrant. They're very colorful. They just look fantastic. And this figure looks insane. Now, this is the issue that I was having with the, the Supreme Collection. If you're a mock collector and you want to have every figure in every single way that it looks, you're going to have to buy, if you want the same heads and all these different things for your figures, man, you're going to have to get three of the Supreme Collection, so you can have one displayed with one gear, one displayed with the other gear, and then one displayed in the box there. So that'll be something that I have to tackle, but you guys will notice he does have butterfly joints. I'm hoping that the figure is just over the top, man, because you guys can see he, get, he comes with his entrance trench coat, he comes with the AEW Championship, he comes with four interchangeable head sculpts, two different gears, and I'm sure he'll probably have you know, not only his shooter hands, but also uh, you know, mic holding hands and stuff like that. So, tons of accessories with these figures. I'm loving the AEW Supreme Collection so far what we've seen but this this Kenny Omega is fantastic the head sculpts are phenomenal I know we get some different like, hair colors and stuff I don't know if they'll all be in the same hair color if we'll get that black or brown may have to be repainted but I like the likenesses that I can see out of all these head sculpts and they look really good outside of that man we also called the second figure in this set which is going to be none other than Malachi Black man this Malachi Black is incredible I think it's in a early contention for figure of the year it just looks incredible man it really really does I love like all these accessories that we're getting here. 
I mean the mask sculpts. You will notice that he comes with five interchangeable head sculpts, two gears for the lower, he comes with like his overthrow, and he also comes with like a face mask deal too. So lots of stuff going on with this figure. I can't wait to see the packaging and what they look like packaged, you know, and how they look and stuff. Will they be open box there? Will they have any Velcro on it? Gonna be really cool to see, but you guys can see the different masks, the different head sculpts. I mean, I will agree with some people's comments. They said that these heads look a bit cartoonish at times. I will agree with that. I think the AEW collection as a whole across the board, unrivaled, unmatched exclusives. Sometimes they do have a bit of a cartoony look, but here it's not bothering me that bad. I actually see some, some realism and some looks in here, and I think even if you hated these heads, you could probably pop on the Mattel Alistair Blackhead and just paint it up a little bit, and it'd look incredible. And if you don't want the face paint, it would still look incredible. So the Malachi Black is insane. I can't believe how good the Malachi Black looks. Very impressed with that figure, and I am very impressed with the Supreme Collection. Now, let's move on to the next Supreme Collection figures, which is going to be Cody and Britt. Now, Cody and Britt look really good, man. Cody Cody is looking great in his red, white, and blue gear. Very America-esque here. He's got a lot of USA vibes going on right here. I like the head sculpts, the screaming head. You, you know, we, it looks like we're going to get new head sculpts here. And I hope these aren't the head sculpts because these don't really look anything like Cody. It'd be a major step back if these were the head sculpts we were getting over the head sculpts we got with his, you know, the TNT Championship ringside exclusive Cody and all his other heads that we've gotten before. I think they hold a much better likeness to Cody. But I like the entrance gear. It does look like these arms are interchangeable. Like, I I can see the double jointed arms here but on top of that you also have these sick ass pants and you also have his other look as well so you you're not only getting the red white blue and gold look but you're also getting his red black and gold look and i'm pretty sure he wore this attire way back in the day man so that's really cool to see there you're gonna get an aew microphone you get the nightmare white weight belt you are gonna get the interchangeable arms it does look like with the entrance throw so i'm guessing that kenny omega will also come with that unless he wore a trench coat i want to say he wore a coat instead of like the vest or like the trench vest or whatever you that like entrance duster thing, whatever the hell you want to call that, but Cody looks really damn good. I love the attires. If the head sculpts are bad, we do have a lot of options for head sculpts, so it's not really the biggest deal for me, but the gear is really sick, and I think it makes the figure. Now we're moving on to Supreme Collection Britt Baker, man. Britt Baker looks incredible as well. I think this may be her best figure to date. I really love the interchangeable lower body here that we're about to see. The way it looks like she has like a promo gear on bottom, like you guys will notice she does have like her Steelers gear going here. So you guys will notice she does have her double jointed jacket arms. I like these head sculpts. They're not like perfect again the likeness isn't perfect but i do like what we got going on here i like the way the jacket fits on the figure but you guys will see that her interchangeable parts are like these black pants so you're gonna get like a promo gear for Britt baker which i think is really awesome so that'll be really awesome to see i cannot wait to see what this figure looks like in complete hand but i like that you got the Britt baker belt buckle on there and i may display this figure with the lower half with you know her her pants because I, I really like that look so you also get her championship so these supreme collection figures are just over the top man you're going to get two pairs of arms and two pairs of legs. So it's literally a legitimate two to three in one figure. How you can inter swap these parts. You can go with, you can go with sleeves, no sleeves, pants, different gears. I mean, this is insane, but this is just the beginning, man. But both series sets one and two of the Supreme Collection look really damn good. Now, I, I must cover this next before we get into other figures, man. This ringside exclusive right here is truly incredible. It's probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen. We have the AEW Unmatched ringside exclusive Mr. Brody Lee and negative one two pack. So not only can you get Mr. Brody Lee again, but we are getting his son, Negative One, in the AEW figure collections, man. And if you look at this packaging, it looks insane. I love this. I think it looks wonderful. You have father and son there in the packaging. I think this is just a truly beautiful tribute by AEW, Jazz Wears, Jeremy, the whole team over there. How you have this unmatched collection with Brody in his white trench coat. Now, I do know that it is rubber. That is, you know, it is what it is. But we have a full-fledged child as a figure, and that's just crazy, man. I can already see him running in on pick feds and, and costing people matches and doing all these crazy things. This memory of Brody Lee figure and box set is incredible. I can't wait to get my hands on this. I definitely want to have trying to complete the loose and mock set, so that will be a must, but that is truly insane, man. What a great look. You get the shot of negative one on his shoulders. I mean, that'll bring tears to your eyes right there, man. That is a beautiful tribute. Great shot by Matt. I believe my buddy Matt did those photos there, so wow. Just a truly incredible thing. Didn't expect that whatsoever. I mean, the sky's the limit with these 
AEW figures, and this is just a beautiful tribute and a crazy thing to add to our figure collections. I think it's great. I love when figure companies step outside the box and do some things that are outside the norm. They bring the craziness, and this is great. And you can also see that by Mattel this year, too, with Dominic, the Build-A-Figure Dominic from 05. So we're getting some crazy things in figure form. Now, outside of that, guys, let's go ahead and move on to Unrivaled Series 9 here before we get into Unrivaled Series 10 and Unmatched Series 4. Let's go ahead and cover Unrivaled Series 9. Now, we're going to take a look at Starks here, and Starks is actually going to be the Chase variant in this set, and I actually like this figure. I'm not a big Ricky Starks fan, all right? Anybody on the channel will know I'm not the biggest Ricky Starks guy, but this figure looks really damn good, man. It looks just like him. I think he had one of the better head sculpts of the day, and not only is he getting a regular version, but he's also getting a Chase variant version with the Darby Allen face paint, which is truly amazing. I think that looks great. Now, like, we have Darby in face paint, we have Sting in Darby face paint, and now we have Ricky Starks in face paint, so you can throw together a whole faction there with the face paint if you want to in your shows and your figure photography or something like that man but that is cool i like the way that looks i th i think that the head sculpts are cool you know is it the best chase variant i guess not you know but i do like the shirt and will i ever find this who the hell knows but i do like what we got going on here man i, I think that they did a really good job on stark's head sculpt and i think he's one of the guys that they actually captured here i like the build i like the boots really great job on stark's now moving on forward guys we also have powerhouse hobbs from unrivaled series 9 you can really see the sculpted detail in the wrist tape here another really solid figure from head to toe here i really like the task-esque gear that he's got going on the boots look really cool i think that he looks right you guys know how i am about white boots and the black and the contrast right there so it looks really insane how it how it has the striped look going down similar to ray mysterio similar to dolph ziggler and trent and guys like that so i really like this figure i think it's going to be one of those powerhouse guys that i can't wait to add to the collection i think this is an underrated figure in the set next up is one that we must talk about man eddie kingston i have my gripes about this figure for sure so the first thing that people are going to say is that it looks like bubba ray dudley and it absolutely does, man. I think this figure just has one of those awkward looks to it, right? Like the head sculpt expression doesn't capture the likeness. I feel like Eddie Kingston has bug eyes. You know, he has those big circular eyes. I don't feel like this captures it, so that's one of my problems with this figure. I also feel like the, the stomach to the, to the waist, to the legs proportions and the way that it carries through isn't very clean. I feel like maybe the torso is a little bit too short for the legs, like the legs are too long, and that leads me to believe that these may be Mox lower legs or Mox legs, but at the same time, the boots look to be a new mold. I don't think those are Mox boots. I could be wrong about that, but uh, this isn't a very good looking figure, and I like Eddie Kingston a lot, so to see this isn't my favorite figure in the set. I'm sure he'll get a better figure down the line, but this is not my favorite. I do like the gear that they went with. I just don't think the execution was quite there for this one, and it's kind of a miss here, but I, uh, you know, you can't really judge these figures too harshly until you get them in hand, but this is just my first impressions of seeing the figure here on display. Now, next up, man, we have Old Man Christian, Jesus Christ in Heaven, man. This is one of those that everybody was destroying on social media. Another good look at the molded wrist tape here. I really like that about the figure. It's kind of his debut gear, I do believe, here in the orange, white, and black. That's not my issues here, man. The issues is going to be in the head sculpt. And I think this is something that we saw with Orange Cassidy in Series 3 of the Unrivaled Collection. It, it, it rears its ugly head here in Unrivaled Series 9. I don't like this head sculpt because it just puts so many unnecessary wrinkles in there. You know, like, I think there needs to be a way to capture likeness without capturing the full age of the person. Like... Christian is getting up there in age, but this makes him look like he's 70. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got heavy, heavy wrinkles on his face. And I think that it could be fixable, but it's going to be a lot of work. I feel like you'd just be better off putting a Mattel head sculpt on this guy, and that'd be the end of it. But I was really hoping to see a great head sculpt on it. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to hit the mark. He definitely looks old. He looks exhausted. Like, he just wants to fall asleep at any moment. So that is a big miss for me. But we are getting Christian there. Everybody was talking about it on social media. I also think it's weird that they gave him a new boot mold. Pretty sure these are new boots, which I think is odd how they change figure to figure. Like, I get it for some guys, but I don't think every single figure needs a one-of-one -one mold. But it is kind of cool to see them give everybody their own unique look. So, that's kind of like a, you know, like a pick-your-poison type deal. Like, a, you know, you got to pick and choose where you do your critiques at. But it is kind of weird. But at the same time, it's cool. So, I, I don't even know what to think there. But there is Christian moving on to the other cage in the set. We also have Brian Cage. And this head sculpt's not bad. I think that he could use a little bit more anger, but I do like the way the facial hair looks. I like the black and yellow and white gear. I like the size of the guy. I think he'll be another really fun figure to hold in hand, kind of like Wardlow. So 
Wardlow will look great up next to this figure. He'll fit right into there to those big bodies. And it's really cool because you know he's going to be able to articulate pretty damn good. So that'll be fun to see. But Brian Cage's figure looks good. I, I heard that he under the table re-signed. So I guess we'll see if that comes to fruition. But I hope that we get this figure in hand because it's our first ever Brian Cage, I do believe, outside of like maybe some small indie style figures. So this is a, a good looking figure, man. Hopefully it will be as good as it looks here. And I like the screaming expression. I don't think he comes with an interchangeable head, but that would be also cool to see. Then the last figure in the set, guys, is going to be the other half of the Chase variants. We have Thunder Rosa here, and her regular version is pretty badass. I like the copper bronzish brown gear that she's got going on. I like her face paint, and the, the likeness on this figure is really good. I like, I like the Days of the Dead makeup going on. I like the entrance gear. I actually think this looks really good, and also her Chase variant looks damn good in the blue. So both of these look really good. I think that I like the Chase variant a little bit better, but the brown gear is not bad whatsoever, man. So that's really cool to see there. If you guys, uh, you know, we've been waiting on a Thunder Rosa for a while. I think she's going to add a lot of depth to the women's collection here for our AEW figures. But Thunder Rosa, both of the heads look good. Both of the attires look good. And I think they did a good job on this women's figure here for Thunder Rosa. Now, moving on, guys, to Unrivaled Series number 10. We have Wardlow making his return to the Unrivaled Collection or making his first appearance, I guess, in the Unrivaled Collection. It is a repaint of his Unmatched Series 2 figure. And I like this figure a lot, man. I really like what he's got going on. You do have the beautiful white and purple gear here, which is just sick as hell. Oh my god, heaven. I love the way it looks. I like, you know, all the different decals he's got going on. Full white gear, you guys know, sign me up. You know, it's a repeat head sculpt, but it's a beautiful looking figure. I like it. It's enough change from his, his other version, so that's all well with me. White wrist tape, his is not molded on there, so I guess that's a thing, but he does have his same boots, but they're in white. You got the knee pads going. Really nice, man. Really sick-ass Wardlow. I like this a lot. Outside of that, we also have our first look at a Taz figure. Now, I want to say the Chase variant is the one that's just staring at you, and then the the regular version is the screaming expression. I could be wrong about that, but it's so cool to see him in this, like, manager-style gear. You have the jacket, you have the hat, you have a solid-looking head. I like the way that the jogger slash pants look with the shoes. I think it's a cool figure, man. I think that, you know, you get two different options here with the screaming head. I want to say he's the chase, but I could be wrong about that. Again, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but I want to say that's the case there. But it's cool to see guys like Taz be pumped out, you know? We finally are getting our hands on a Taz figure that's nice for our collections. Kind of a boring looking figure, but at the same time, I like to see this, you know, this different take here and getting some new characters. And moving on next, guys, we also have Andrade, and Andrade looks really cool. His New York Yankee style pants is what I like to call them. I love the pinstripes. Solid looking head sculpt on here. We also have the interchangeable mask head sculpt, which I like. I do think that his eyes may be showing through a little bit more than they should, but I could be wrong about that. He has his black gloves. I think this would be sick to take this figure and then interchange like a whole faction into these pants. So get some guys that are similar size to Andrade and popping the, the pinstripe pants on there. I'm going to put everybody in damn pinstripe pants. I'm going to buy every figure three times just so I can have a version to put onto the pinstripe pants. That's just a joke, but seriously, I, I've always loved the white pants look and then adding the pinstripes is clean as hell. Even though I'm a Red Sox fan, that look is so clean. I, I, I have to give it to the Yankees. That is a clean ass look. So Andrade's looking very fire. We also have our next look at another Miro figure. Now Miro is making his return here to the line for the first time in the Unrivaled line, much like Wardlow. He was in the Unmatched line. Now we have his TNT red gear, and this is sick. Much better head than his first go around. I can already tell you this figure is going to slap because this first figure was really fun to articulate, but he also had, you know, his head sculpt was kind of a problem. So seeing these new head sculpts, you have interchangeable head sculpt and a championship, TNT championship, as well as the beautiful red gear. Love both of them. Think they both look really good. I think this is an upgrade for sure on his first figure, and I definitely think you should pick up a couple of these and put one of these heads on your old Miro, because I love the camo gear from the old Miro. I just didn't like the head sculpt, so do that swap right there. That could be really fire. We have another Jake Hager returning to the line here, so another Jake Hager making it in here, man. He has his inmate gear. I want to say that was from, what, War Games or, or the Blood and Guts match. He does have his sculpted tape. He's got a great looking head. I actually think this head is sick as hell. I like the boots, the way they look. I think this figure looks pretty damn good. I think it looks really cool. The, the screaming expression has actually got some really nice likeness. Even if it didn't even, if it came like this today, if this figure arrived at my doorstep as it is without the little, you know, prototype shoulder pad or shoulder peg things, I would love this figure. So I think it's a great one. I think it's going to be better than his first go around and it's not his wrestling gear. He, you know, it's kind of outside the box. Now moving on next guys, we have another Britt Baker. Britt Baker is in Unrivaled Series number 10. So I'll run down the 
full set here as we break down Unrivaled Series number 10 so you guys will know for sure. But Britt Baker comes to us in this red and black gear and I actually like the figure. You know, I'm not going to tear it down too much. I think it actually does look pretty daggum solid here. I think the head sculpt's nice. I like the jacket. I like the championship. Not the most different tweaks, but I do like it. It is enough different here. You got it kind of like a blood and guts theme going with the black and red. So the all black boots look solid. I like it better than her black and silver and I think I like it better than her silver attire that we got with the blood and guts or that silver white reddish gear that we got, you know. So I like this Britt Baker. Nothing too special about it, but she does return here in the Unrivaled line. So in Unrivaled Series 10, man, giving you the rundown, it's Wardlow, Taz, Andrade, Miro, Jake Hager, and Britt. Now I just realized I don't think I have the Chase variants for Series 10. Maybe maybe Taz is the Chase variant or maybe I just missed out on that information, but that is your complete Unrivaled Series 10. Alright guys, so moving on to Unrivaled Series 11, you guys are going to be very impressed with this. We only got to see Unrivaled Series 9 and 10 on display. We did not see Series 11 or 12 on display, but we do have some render images and then we do have a uh, Series 12 announced to us. So, Series 11, man, starting out first, we have Adam Cole, baby. And Adam Cole looks really good. I think they nailed the head sculpt. The head sculpt looks, looks just like Mattel. I guess Adam Cole just has a very face scannable face because they nail it every time. I don't think this man has a bad head sculpt. Has he had a bad head sculpt? I've never seen it. You know, he, he always gets knocked out of the park with his head. I like the gear they went with. I like the black and white. Kind of a plain Jane, you know, but I, I'm pretty sure this is his debut gear. He does come with his leather jacket. It is going to be rubber molded. You guys know how it is. But I'm really excited to see Adam Cole here. It looks beautiful. Can't wait to have it. I think it is going to be very impressive. Outside of Adam Cole in Unrivaled Series 11, man, we also have Chris Jericho. Now, you guys are going to notice, you may be annoyed with Chris Jericho here in the set, but they're trying to complete that blood and guts look in like the prison uniform. So Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz are trying to complete that full set. Same thing for MJF's team out of that same match, I do believe, in the white and purple and all that. So I think that's what they're trying to accomplish here. And so he looks good. I like it how they have all of their unique names on the back. They all look good. It's the same head sculpt. I mean, that's kind of annoying, but I do like the jumpsuit mold, and maybe we can make some really cool characters out of those bottoms or something, because you guys know you can kick bash AEW figures, so I'm excited to see Jericho here. I don't have an issue with that. We also have Jungle Boy in this set. Now, I do not like this head sculpt. Hopefully, it looks better in person than it does here in the render, but it is a unique look. He's got, like, his maroonish gear going on. His figures are good. It's just his knee pads suck, man. They really prevent him from bending his knee, and that's unfortunate, because, you know, it is like a one-of-one -one mold. They do a good job on that, but but I don't know. I, I hate that Luchasaurus isn't in this set, so I think that's bummerific too. I'd like to see another Luchasaurus if we were going to get that, but I think maybe they're retooling him. Maybe they're trying to get him a lot better, so maybe that'll be the case there, but I think his other two head sculpts were a lot better than this, and the two gears were better than this, but we'll see how this looks when we get it in hand. Outside of Jungle Boy, we also have Kip Sabian finally making his entrance into the line. Now, AEW Unrivaled Series 11, when this man was around when the, the start of the show happened, so that's insane to see him take 11 series to get to. I thought this man would have been within like the first five or six series. Here he is in series 11, but at least his figure looks good. I think the head, you know, the head sculpt does look like him. I hope they don't go with that Trent torso. This kind of, you know, looks like a Trent torso or something, but you know, it is what it is, man. Hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully he's a good size and you know, everything. His tattoos look good. I like the way Kip Sabian looks and it's a, it's a long time coming, but he's going to come with his leather jacket. Again, probably going to be rubber molded. Well, we also have Penelope Ford. Now, I don't know about you guys, but look at the backside of this figure and I commented on this post for ringside because I was like pre-order pre sales are going to be through the roof with this one and I think we can all acknowledge why that would be the case but it is cake season apparently in AEW because AEW and Rival Series 11 has Penelope Ford. The figure looks good you know I like the gear and everything. Head sculpt looks solid here. Nothing over the top here except for the backside. And the last figure in Unrivaled Series 11 is going to be Darby Allen, and this is sick as hell. I do believe this is the match of the you know the tag team match there with Sting and Darby Allen there, or was that a handicap match? It may have been a handicap match, but you guys know it was like a off, it was like a cinematic match, and it's the half sting half Darby Allen face paint. I think this is to match our Luminaries collection. Sting, it does look like his wrist tape's actually going to be molded on there. Like, that's the new kind of technology we're getting. I like this, these lowers that we got, kind of like the army gear style pants or the cargo pants going on. I like this Darby. I think it's different. It gives us a different look. New face paint. Really cool. Darby Allen is the Jeff Hardy of AEW. They're going to pump him out time and time and time again. He connects with the younger folks. He's got the face paint. He has a very unique look about him. Tattoos, all the good stuff. He's going to be pumped out religiously, and I'm here for it. So I'm all for Darby Allen there. And so in Series 11, you have Adam Cole, Chris Jericho, Jungle Boy, Kip Sabian, Penelope Ford, 
and Darby Allen. The chase variants I do not think have been named yet. I would imagine it'd probably be Adam Cole and Darby Allen or Adam Cole and probably Kip Sabian. Possibly Penelope Ford could be there. I don't see it being Jericho with that unique look there, but they do change the figure up, so I guess we'll see. But that's AEW Unrivaled Series 11. We also have Unrivaled Series 12 on the screen, and that is going to be none other than Mox, FTR, Private Party, and Jamie Hayter. So John Moxley, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, and Jamie Hayter all here. I didn't think it would take this long to get Private Party, but we do have three repeats in the set. Not a big deal. Another Mox. I mean, just adding to the list of mocks. Hope to God FDR's figures are better than their last. It's funny because they're wearing the same gear in the renders here and they were wearing green last time. Maybe they switched them up. Maybe we'll get the green gear this time. I just need a better head sculpt from those guys. That's all we really ask there for those guys but I think it's a solid set. Can't wait to have Private Party. Jamie Hayter, kind of a surprise there. Didn't expect to see her here but there she is you know and uh, hopefully that figure will be solid. But there's AEW Unrivaled Series 11 and 12. Now moving on to a match series number 4 guys. Let's start off. We already saw CM Punk. I did want to get that one out of the way because I who a lot of people would want to see. So Interon Match Series number four up next to CM Punk, man. We do have our Luminaries Collection, Chris Jericho. Now, this is a very unique look. Of course, this is way back in his days in Mexico, I do believe. But this is a crazy looking figure. Now, I will be real with you. I don't think the head is the most perfect, right? He kind of, like, I know he's supposed to be a young Jericho, but it really doesn't give me Jericho vibes at all. He does have a very, very young looking take here. You know, it's very different. You're not going to see this every day. But I think it's a cool figure. I love that they can go way back in the day since they have, like, the rights to Jericho. Jericho and stuff, so I think that's really awesome. I don't know if they have to pay anybody for this look, but I think it's cool. I really do like it, how they go way back in the day and capture this for the Luminaries collection. I like the Lion kick pads. I like it. I think it's solid, and if you hate it, loose. I am going to keep one mock, but if you hate it, loose. Could always try to find, like, a young Jericho head and kind of customize it, make it look a little bit better, but I like it. I like what's going on with it, even though the head is not the best. I think that's kind of the biggest con today with a lot of these figures is the head sculpt. Now, if we move on, guys, we also have a look at MJF. Now, another figure that I love from the neck down, but the head sculpt just misses the mark again. I love the white gear. I love the white and purple. It's very clean. It looks sick. The white elbow pad, the scarf, MJF looks insane, but this head sculpt, who is that? That's not MJF, man. That is not MJF. He has a very box-like head. He looks very odd. Do not know what's going on with that, but the figure does look good from the neck down. I think it's a fantastic figure from the neck down. I have no issues with that whatsoever. Very clean gear, and I may have to make an all-white gear with white boots and all, so that may, be have, you know, that may have to be something we do with some Scorpio Sky Series number 5 boots or something, but MJF is looking good outside of the head. We also got a look at Jade Cargill. Now, Jade Cargill is looking pretty damn good, man. I think this figure looks just like her for the most part. The only issue I have is maybe her arms. I feel like, you know, her musculature, they do have, like, her back, and they do have her thighs, and, like, her abs are pretty good and well-defined, but I think that they could have gave her some more cut arms. I don't know. I guess they didn't want to make a whole new sculpt for her, you know, her shoulders and her, her biceps, but she's jacked, man. She's probably one of the most jacked women and most probably aesthetically, like, as far as, like, musculature it, it goes. Like, her arms are are freakish. Like, she is an insane athlete, and her physique is insane. So, I think they should have brought that through with her figure. I do like the gear in the black and gold. I think the head sculpt's solid. Not the best likeness again on this, but we will probably get better ones in the future. But her musculature on the arms could be a bit bigger, but I do like this figure, and I like Jade, so this is pretty cool. We also have a look at Cody, who is on a match series four and he is actually in suits so this is like our first suited style promo gear and i love the leg mold i like the sleeves that we got going i will say that i hate they went with like the winter coat edition i think like a regular suit jacket would have been fine but he does have a screaming expression you can put the smiley head you can put the straight face so many different cody heads that we've seen so that won't be an issue but i would have liked to seen you know not no winter coat you know not the winter coat but give me the you know the regular long blazer jacket vest so that we could have a regular blazer cody but this will still work and maybe they'll have it where he can pop the winter coat off and pop like the actual blazer on and maybe underneath he'll be in his vest and stuff so it won't look stupid when he has the you know this this winter coat long blazer style jacket off the figure I think that'll be really cool but I like all the molds we got going on with this guy really cool job here to give us a suited figure I love it and the last figure in the set is another promo gear guy from a guy we've seen a ton of figures from so this is the kind of stuff we wanted to see you know everybody always talks about oh we get the same guys we get the same guys but we finally got the same guys but they actually have different looks looks, which is beautiful to see. We have Adam Hangman Page, or Hangman Adam Page, with the smiley head sculpt, and he's in his beautiful cowboy gear street. So he has like these, I want to say these are ostrich skin boots, the ones with the little bumps on them, I think are ostrich skin, if I'm 
I'm not mistaken. But that going on, I love the belt buckle with the jeans. I love the cowboy style t-shirt. He's got his big can of beer soda going. And I like the head sculpt. So really cool Adam Page, man. Really cool Adam Page figure. I think this is phenomenal. I love getting unique stuff like this. I told you guys they went all out today on these reveals. And I think that this is one of those figures that really, really brings that home. And I think that they did a great job capturing that. Can't wait to see what else he comes with. He may just come with this, but I think it'll be a beautiful figure in packaging as well. But damn, what a good looking figure. And that silver packaging, this figure will look phenomenal. But I really like what we got going on with these different promo gears, including the Supreme Collection Brit. You got this one. You got Cody. Really sick stuff. Now, carrying things on, guys, we have more sets. I know. It's unreal. The amount of news we got today, man, I felt like it was Comic-Con or something. We, we had an early Comic-Con going on today, man. Unmatched Series number 5. We also have Unmatched Series 6 and 7 to cover. They are not renders. These are not shown off. These are only renders for Series 5, and then we do have the reveals for Series 6 and 7. But Series 5, man, starting out first, Brian Danielson Unmatched Series number 5. What a beautiful looking figure. I love the interchangeable heads. You have like a promo style, a yelling style. You have like an in match style. Beautiful gear. I love this. This is fantastic. I love the way it looks. It's borderline perfect. It probably will be perfect when we get it in hand. Just what a beautiful execution of a figure. I'm excited to have this figure, and it just looks phenomenal. You couldn't ask for more for Brian Danielson. I hope that we get more out of him, you know, in figure form, so maybe he'll rock some sick gear tomorrow night, and we can get us a sick Revolution Brian Danielson, but this figure looks phenomenal. Next up in the set, we do have the Darby Allen LJN figure that they pushed back from Unmatched Series 3. They did push it back to Unmatched Series 5, so here it is in Unmatched Series number 5, but we are finally getting Darby Allen. We also have a look at a really, really cool Kenny Omega. Look how unique. We have the heel Kenny Omega here with the crazy Hawaiian-style blazer jacket in his blue jeans with his white sneakers. He's got the crazy haircut, handlebar mustache, sunglasses, yelling expression. I love this. I love this a lot. I think you could take that, you know, take the sunglasses off, pop this on a regular Kenny and wrestling gear. You could pop the waist off here and make many people in jeans. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless, man. Once we get years and years into this line, there's going to be so many Kenny Omegas that we have to collect and just so many different variations. But this is awesome. This is the kind of figures that you love to see. Things that are outside of the box, things that you don't see all the time. This is great. I love this Kenny. One of my favorite figures from today, and I think it's great. Next up, guys, we also have Red Velvet which is an interesting selection. I didn't think we'd see her here, but there she is. Unmatched Series number 5. Really cool to expand again on the women's collection. You know, just little by little adding to that women's collection and women's roster of our women's figures. I think once we get to, like, Unrivaled Series, what, 11 or 12, we're gonna have a ton of women's figures already right there. Like, a full-fledged roster for sure. And after we get through these unmatched collections, you guys are really gonna say that. So, Red Velvet looks pretty solid here. In the caption, they said LJN, but I think that was just a little typo or something like that. Next up in the set is Sammy Guevara and he is matching Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, of course, in that blood and guts, you know, jumpsuit style packaging, or not packaging, but you guys know what I'm talking about. The same attire there, matching. I like both expressions. You got like a pissed off yelling head, and then you have like a more serious straight face Sammy Guevara. I think it looks good. Head to toe, again, lots of different part selections and stuff. You know, they can't use the same pants mold for all these guys, so these are going to be unique sculpts, unique legs and stuff to possibly make customs in the future, which is really beautiful. But Sammy Guevara is an Unmatched Series 5, and we also have a look at Sean Spears. Sean Spears is also in this collection. We have been waiting on a Sean Spears, and here he is. We have the chairman. I love the way he looks, man. He looks a lot like MDT would look if he was a wrestler. He's got the sleeve. He's got the full sleeve tattoos. He's got the white gear. I mean, he's looking fresh. He's got the nice haircut. I mean, he's kicking ass. I mean, I don't have a mohawk, but he's looking pretty damn good. I like this figure. I love it again. He's matching Wardlow. He's matching that MJF. They're getting that full team out there, and I think that is what their plans are here. So I have no problems with this. I think it looks great. If he doesn't come with a chair, I think it'd be a terrible mistake. So hopefully he will come with a chair. It's the only way, right? He's got to come with a chair, so hopefully that'll be the case. But he wraps up our unmatched Series number 5. Now, we are going to wrap up Series number 6, but running through Series 5 one more time for the full line. You have Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson. That's on me. We have Darby Allen's LJN, Kenny Omega, Red Velvet, Sammy Guevara, and Sean Spears to wrap up Unrivaled or Unmatched Series number 5. Unmatched Series number 6 is going to be Mr. Brody Lee, Malachi Black, Ruby Soho, Santana, Ortiz. Again, think about it. Santana and Ortiz are going to match Sammy Guevara, Jake Hager, Chris Jericho. So if you're wondering, oh my gosh, Santana and Ortiz again, it's because they're going to match that same deal. So 
they will look just like the rest of the inner circle. That is what I'm guessing there. It makes the most sense. It paints the perfect picture. So there is that. I'm really excited to see Ruby Soho. Can't wait to see what her figure looks like. But you're probably wondering who Vacant is over there. I'm also thinking, sorry this is off topic before we get out of here. Unmatched Series number 6. I hope Malachi and Brody Lee are both in suit like Unmatched Series 4 Cody. That would be amazing. I would love to see that, man. Please give that to me. Unmatched Series number 6. Suited Malachi and suited Brody Lee. Sign me the hell up, Brad. But the if you're wondering who that vacant spot is, it's going to be none other than Luminaries Collection Owen Hart, man. What a banger of a set. This Unmatched Series 6 set is insane, and they top it off with an Owen Hart. Unbelievable. Cannot cannot believe that that is a real thing, man. You're going to have to be really quick on your pre-order. Use code MDTOYS, man, because as soon as that set goes up for pre-order, it's going to be gone, man. That Owen Hart figure is going to fly. It's going to be really hard to find, and hopefully it'll be something that people can track down, but damn, bro. What, what an epic figure, and that is an insane set. We're getting an Owen Hart figure in 2022. Unbelievable. Just truly unbelievable, but that is Unmatched Series number 6 and 5, and now we're moving on to AEW Unmatched Collection Series number 7. Pulling it up on screen now, we have another CM Punk. We have Penta. We have Thunder Rosa. We have Ray Phoenix. We have Pac, and we have none other than Hook himself, man. So another epic set right here with Series 7. Some heavy hitters. You have your Thunder Rosa in there. That'll be her second slash third figure if you count the chase. You have CM Punk in there for his second slash third. You have Penta and Phoenix in there. Some recognizable faces. And then you also have Pac, who's a re-release, but then you have Hook in there, man. So, a great epic hit heavy hitter set again, especially with CM Punk and Hook being in there. I know those are going to be very sought after. So, another epic series. So, a series 4, 5, 6, and 7 were all shown off today. Plenty of great figures. Again, an unrivaled series number, what, 9, 10, 11, and 12 were all shown off. So, dude, they were just bringing the heat today, man. So many different figures, so many different things, and we're still not done yet. So, I think this is the last, like, official figures that we're getting as far as, like, you know, straight-up figures, not including, like, wrestling buddies and things of that nature. We have our first GameStop exclusive AEW figures, man. So, get ready. Buckle the hell up, man. We are getting Street Fighter Elite Editions. Elite being the faction of Kenny Omega, Nick, and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks, from their gear based on Street Fighter from Fighter Fest 2019. They have their cloth geese. They have their long pants. Kenny Omega has his red man bun head sculpt. These look incredible. So we have the wrestling buddy to go along with it with Kenny Omega. You have the figure themselves. I don't think it's a three pack, okay? So don't go in here thinking it's a three pack like all three of them are in one sick ass box set. I think they are all three individuals by themselves. I'm also thinking to myself, how sick is this packaging going to be? I mean, my God, it's going to have orange foil. It's going to have red foil. It's going to have the traditional gold. It's going to be red for GameStop. It's going to have a sick-ass sticker on it. It's, it. Like, I'm just so enthralled with how it's going to look in box, so that should be really beautiful to see. But you have all three members there. I think Nick Jackson's head looks pretty abysmal, to be honest with you. He looks like a giraffe neck. Matt Jackson's is okay. His eyes look a bit wonky. And then Kenny Omega's is actually pretty solid. I, I don't mind that but I think these are prototype heads repainted so I, I'm not sure you also you also will know that his gear is the the black and pink so there's nothing special about that but the head sculpt sick he should also have the back paint on right just painted straight there on his back so that'll be really cool to see but I'm excited for these I think they're awesome uh, another exclusive hopefully people will be able to get their hands on them and stuff but you never truly know right you never truly know any of that stuff nonetheless I think that pretty much wraps up everything as far as figures are concerned man I think we wrapped up all the Supreme Editions, the Unmatched Collections, the Unrival Collections, the Exclusives. I'm, I'm sure there's so much. To, oh, yeah, we do have some Wrestling Buddies here. I guess I can run through it real quick. So, for Wrestling Buddies, we do have Sting, we have Mox, we have Penta, we have MJF, we have Chris Jericho, we have Ray Phoenix, and we do have CM Punk. So, those will be really cool as well. But we do have a bunch of Wrestling Buddies there, and I think they have even more coming soon if you include the Street Fighter one from GameStop. So, Really exciting stuff, tons of stuff. I had to put a hurting on my wallet, so that does upset me. But my God, what what beautiful stuff we have going on here, man. I mean, I can't believe all the stuff we saw. Again, it felt like Comic-Con. I know this video is very long. Hopefully, you guys stuck around to the very end. I'd greatly appreciate it if you guys did. Let me know your favorite reveals down in the comment section below. What cool-looking stuff we got today, man. It's really cool. I I, I just don't even have the words. I, again, it wasn't a perfect day. Some figures are going to have their flaws. Head sculpts are the main issue today, I think. But I'd say from the neck down across the board, I think a lot of these figures really crushed it. I'd say CM Punk's legs are like his kick pad mold that they use. And then a lot of the head sculpts, but the Supreme Collection looks insane. A lot of these exclusives look insane. The Unmatched Collection Series 4 looks crazy good. 
And I think that we have uh, tore the lid off, man. I think it's really good stuff, man. I cannot wait to get these figures in hand, do the reviews, pose them around, and get all the stuff going. Especially with a pick fed starting back very soon. Should be very fun to get these guys in here, man. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Leave me all your thoughts on these figures down in the comment section below. I'm getting out of here. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you, and don't cross the line like old ass, very tired Christian Cage. You cross the line, I've been